So I don't like VPNs, but in today's video, we're gonna be building one. What's up with that? VPNs are clunky and they're risky. They're a pain to deploy, they significantly impact performance, and they're honestly just designed for a different era, an older one. Just a quick Google will show you how many VPN providers have had to disclose vulnerabilities, which is an even bigger problem when you consider that they require open inbound ports, essentially a visible front door with a frequently faulty lock. And lots of people want to use something like a VPN for privacy, but the reality is that a lot of VPN providers literally sell your data. For some of them, that's how they make money. Now, I work at Twingate and we provide zero trust network access, which is remote access that's kind of like a VPN, but also it's very much not a VPN. Honestly, take a look at our website because it's plastered all over there. With Twingate, you can access something that's on a private network, but you also get super specific access controls, peer-to-peer -peer architecture for super fast performance, and very importantly, no open inbound ports. Twingate is split tunnel by default. That means that only the traffic that is bound for a resource protected by Twingate, a Raspberry Pi, your NAS, something like that, only that specific traffic is routed through Twingate infrastructure. If I wanna watch like a YouTube video or something, the way that Twingate is architected, that traffic would not have to go through an encrypted tunnel. And that's part of why Twingate's performance is so much better than traditional VPNs and also things like cloud proxy providers. However, there are times when you may want to route all of your traffic through an encrypted tunnel. Say you're traveling and you're on guest Wi-Fi that you don't really feel so great about. That would be an instance where you would want all of your traffic routed through Twingate. And sometimes you'll want to route all your traffic through a defined point somewhere else in the world. So that if I'm building something here in New York, which is where I live, I can test that it works just as I expect in Sydney or Singapore or Toronto. So for those reasons, we are gonna be building a special project today. It is a DIY privacy VPN done the Twingate way. That means that we still get the performance benefits of Twingate's peer-to-peer -peer architecture and all of Twingate's security controls, including, say it with me again, no open inbound ports. We're gonna go over two different deployment methods today. The first is gonna show you how to deploy this DIY privacy VPN locally. And then the second is gonna show you how to deploy it globally in the cloud. My wonderful, wonderful colleague, Andrew, has made deploying this project honestly, dead easy. So huge kudos to him. I feel like I am just kind of constantly singing his praises on this channel. But back to our project, both of these deployment methods are gonna be using Twingate exit networks. They'll let us route all of our traffic through Twingate so that it stays encrypted and protected. And we can select the egress point that we want to route all of our traffic through. You can still do a ton of really cool stuff on Twingate's free starter tier. But what I'm really excited to share is that we have a new plan called Twingate Home. This is a personal plan that lets you take some of the more advanced features like exit networks that have been historically reserved for businessy focused paid plans so that you can build some really cool advanced personal projects. Now, because we actually want people using Twingate Home and using things like exit networks, we are offering six months free through our Access Pass program. So you can test it out totally for free. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. That is what we actually want. So I will have a link to Access Pass in the description. Okay, first up, deploying locally. There are some cases where you'll want to route your traffic through your home network. Like maybe you have a service that requires your home's static IP address because it uses IP whitelisting or something like that. It's also a great way to just kind of start tinkering with this particular project and learn some of the basics. We're gonna be doing this using Minikube, which is basically just an open source tool that makes Kubernetes really easy to use and friendly for local deployments. Now you might be like, hold up, couldn't I just deploy a Twingate exit network on like a Raspberry Pi and call it a day? Isn't Kubernetes even more local friendly? Kubernetes like Minikube, isn't it a bit overkill for a project like this? The honest answer is maybe kind of, but let's talk to the guy who actually built this to learn why he took this route. The one and only Andrew B. So I wanted to learn DevOps. I use a VPN pretty regularly. So I thought, why not try to figure out how to, to create a VPN? I wanted to learn Kubernetes. So this led me to Minikube, which is a way to deploy Kubernetes to your local PC and basically use that as a, a development environment. Twingate has this, this really cool feature called an exit network, which allows 
allows you to basically funnel all of your traffic to one specific place, and then have it go in or out of that specific place. So for me, the main use case was being able to test my personal projects in other countries. So as an example, I can deploy my backend service in New York City. And for users that are in Europe, as an example, they're going to obviously have a different experience than me when being in upstate New York. The key to this project is understanding what's going on under the hood. Going in and actually understanding line by line of what's actually going on in the code is, is super important. So I have the repo pulled up here, and then I'm just going to jump over to the Minikube deployment. And we can see here in the readme that there are a few things that we're going to need. On the software side, we will need Minikube, we'll need Helm, we'll need cube control. Now I've already got these installed on my machine, but if you don't have them, I recommend using Homebrew for Mac OS and Linux. To get Homebrew up and running, it's just one command. And then from there, we can check these software requirement boxes by literally just doing brew install minikube, brew install Helm. It's honestly that easy. All of these install commands are in the readme. So it is super, super easy to get these on your machine. Then you're gonna need something for container runtime. I have Docker desktop installed already, but you could also use something like Podman or Containered for this. And then this is a Twingate project. So you're gonna need some Twingate pieces. You will need an active tenant. It's super easy to sign up. You'll need access to exit networks. And like I said earlier, you can get this free for six months through our access pass program, which is gonna be linked in the description. And then you'll need the ability to generate an API token, which is honestly just standard permissions. So if you were the one to sign up for your Twingate tenant, you should be good to go here. So get your software requirements knocked out, sign up for Twingate, and then we can start cooking with gas. Okay, first up, we need a values.yaml file. And Andrew already has an example file in the repo. So we are just gonna clone it. The original is examples-values.yaml and I just want a plain old values.yaml. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, and now it's time to update our newly created values file. First up, network name. If we pop over to the Twingate admin console, it's right here. So now just paste that in. Next, an API token. So back in Twingate, we're gonna go to settings, then API, and then generate a token with read write provision permissions and then just paste that in. And lastly, a remote network ID. This is for our exit network, so we are gonna need to create one here. We'll navigate to internet security, then exit networks, and then we are going to create an on-premise exit network. Now, where is this ID? It's up here in the URL. So we'll grab that paste it in, and now we are ready to go. And let's just hit save. The number of times <laughs> I have forgotten to hit save and thought some disaster was happening in some project I was running. Anyway, hit save. <laughs> and now we're gonna deploy. And all we have to do here is just a dot slash deploy dot sh. And now it's just a waiting game. A very short one, but we have a minute here. So while I have you captive for this minute, I wanna talk about how any of this is actually teaching us DevOps because I just ran a few commands. So like, what? Because this is a small, self-contained, easy to deploy project, it's also easy to tinker with. I can deploy it once, get everything up and running, and then I can start messing around. Like we could start playing with some basic cube control commands. Actually, let's go do that. So we can run some basic commands here, like cube control, get pods, dash n, twin gate, and we can look at them go. If we go back to our admin console, you can see that my mini cube is up and running, which is exactly what I wanna see, except why is it yellow here? That is because Twingate by default recommends using two connectors for things. Because I created my exit network in advance, it auto created two connectors that are offline to start but our Minikube deployment actually brought one of them online. I only need the one because this is a small local deployment. So I'm going to delete the excess and then we'll see that my exit network is now green and shiny and happy with me. So if I go to my Twingate client and I'm gonna refresh it real quick 
And we can see that I now have the option to route all of my traffic through my beautiful, shiny new exit network. And from here, you could tear everything down. You can redeploy it. You can test different configurations. You can play around with monitoring and performance logs. Andrew put together a bunch of different example commands in the readme for this. So you can start to tinker, start to experiment and start to see into the black box that is DevOps and Kubernetes. Next up, global deployment. For this portion of the project, we're going to deploy exit networks to specific regions. That way I can route my traffic through a specific geo. Like I said before, this is really useful for localization testing. So if I'm developing something here in New York and I wanna make sure that it is working as expected for someone in Singapore, I can test that. In addition to using Twingate, we're gonna be using DigitalOcean droplets for this. DigitalOcean is a cloud provider that we honestly love working with because they're really beginner user friendly. They're really dev friendly, and they also support incredibly complex enterprise grade environments. So it's this really wide range of stuff that you can do with DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean droplets are basically just cost-effective VMs. So let's go over to the droplet section of our repo. Okay, prerequisites. You'll need the same Twingate access as before. So been there, done that. And then you'll also need access to DigitalOcean and the ability to generate an API token there. And now we're gonna be using Terraform. If we pop over to the providers file, you can see that we have the Twingate provider and the DigitalOcean provider ready to go here. What we need is a Terraform variables definition file, which has an example version right here. Thank you, Andrew. So we are just gonna clone that and remove the example portion of the name. And now we'll get to updating. And let's focus just on the top here to start out. I'll need my Twingate network name, got that. Then I need some API tokens. So let's grab Twingates since we are experts at that by now. Copy and paste that in. Now we'll need one for DigitalOcean. So if we go over to DigitalOcean, navigate down to the API here, we can generate one and paste it in. So what's in the rest of the file that we're actually looking at here? These are all of the droplets that we're gonna be deploying across various regions. So we've got Toronto, we've got Frankfurt, we've got Singapore. These aren't regions that I just like pulled out of a hat. They're all regions specifically supported by DigitalOcean. They have a full list of those if you wanna check it out. And now it's time to deploy this thing. We'll start by navigating to the right directory. Then it's time to initialize. So we will just hit Terraform init and then we'll let that do its thing here. Next up is Terraform plan. We can see that most of the stuff from our variables definition file is appearing as it should here minus things that are gonna be updating once we actually hit apply. All right, we'll hit Terraform apply and let it cook. Let's see what's happening over on the DigitalOcean side. All my beautiful little droplets are spinning up. Look at them go. What about on the Twingate side? If you were paying attention, you may have noticed that this time around, we didn't need to create an exit network before we hit deploy. That is because Terraform did it for us. We can see that they've been spun up here and we just need to wait a minute or two for our connectors to get up and running. If I refresh the page here, we should start to see my exit networks turning green, which means my connectors are live. And then as they turn green, this is kind of fun to see, they'll simultaneously start appearing as options within my Twingate client. Honestly, it kind of feels like magic because functionally I updated a single file and all that file really seemed to say was create these VMs in these regions. So how do we get to the point that we can access them, that we can turn them into exit networks? The answer is over here in our main file. This is where so much of that magic is happening. We're doing all the setup configuration we need, we're creating exit networks to correspond to each droplet. We're deploying connectors so we can actually connect to things. And all of this works together so that by the time you actually hit Terraform apply, you feel honestly a little bit like a magician. And just like with Minikube, this is so easy to deploy that it creates a fun playground for you to learn in. Try messing with files and see what breaks. Add a new region, change the size of your droplets. DevOps can feel like a configuration nightmare and honestly, a little bit of a black box. For some people, building a project truly from scratch is how they like to learn. But for me personally, it can feel a little bit too daunting because it's hard to understand 
what is breaking, why things aren't working, why they are working, I find those pieces hard to connect when I'm starting from scratch. But with this DIY privacy VPN project, you can one, build something that you will actually want to use, which is kind of incentive in and of itself. And two, deploy something that works so that you can pick it apart piece by piece. You can experiment, you can play around. And then if you create a messy, messy disaster, you can tear it all down and restart it. Easy peasy. It's a really useful way to actually know which of your specific actions, which commands, which changes in files are affecting your deployment. And then slowly but surely, you can do more of these types of projects. You can build more from scratch, and then you can start to intuitively understand how all of these different pieces work together. From there, you can just get more and more complex with the types of projects that you deploy and with how much you're building from scratch. I could go on and on and on, but honestly, I will stop myself and just say a huge thank you to Andrew for all of the work that he's done with open source projects at Twingate in general, but also this one, which has been really fun to work on. I will have links to everything you could possibly need in the description below, along with all of our documentation. I'd love to hear how your own deployments are going. So let me know in the comments and let me know what you wanna see next from the team. And I will see you in the next video.